I sometimes get categorized as a personal finance blogger because I have this blog that talks about how to make personal choices that'll make you richer. But really, now don't put this on Twitter, but I don't really give that much of a shit about your personal finances. <laughs> <laughs> What I care about is how much better a world we're all going to get to live in if we all become a bit more rational uh, with our money. So all this, because money is a really powerful thing. It really has the power to like, completely improve the world we live in, or it could also trash it overnight, just depending on what choices we make with that money. A lot of power, and it really boils down to only three amazing facts. Three amazing facts that will make you rich. Fact number one, almost everybody sucks at money. <laughs> and this includes the middle class, the poor, our financial advisors. This is way funnier than I expected to be, thank you. Most of our stock market traders and gurus and what we consider to be the rich people, and of course, even our presidential candidates and the mayors of our cities and the people who design our, the cities that we live in, they all suck at money. But what do I mean by that? You're going to have to stay tuned because first we have to cover fact number two. <laughs> Getting rich enough to retire only takes about 10 years. None of this 45-year nonsense where you retire at 65 or 70 or never, like they keep telling us in the newspapers. And just as an example, here's my own story. You can follow along with the arrows. Here's me at 21 years old, drinking some beer with a buddy because we had just finished engineering school. Next, here's me about halfway through my career at 26, rocking a little low-key Satan costume in my cubicle one <laughs> afternoon because <laughs> it was Halloween. <laughs> halfway through my career. Then, at the bottom, there's me at 31, freshly retired, enjoying a beach on Hawaii with some friends on a kayak trip. And then fast-forwarding another 10 years, here's me very recently on another beach with some more friends, a bit less good-looking, but uh, at least I'm still retired and still having a good time. <laughs> Work is better when you don't need the money. <laughs> Now, it's wonderful to become rich enough to retire. But what if you don't want to retire because you can't imagine yourself sitting around all day? Well, I agree. You're probably going to keep working. You just might choose to do different work. And you're, probably, you're definitely going to have a lot more fun doing it because work is better when you don't need the money. So before we go any further, we should probably take a step back, and I can explain to you who I am and why I could think I'm qualified to change the diapers of the entire rich world like this. <laughs> On the internet, my name is Mr. Money Mustache, and these days I'm an accidental, part-time lifestyle guru and the leader of an ironic, fake cult that is called Mustachianism. And 15 years ago, I had a dream. My girlfriend and I had been together for a while, and things were getting serious, and we were figuring we'd probably get married eventually, and we'd probably have kids eventually. But we both wanted to be free from the need to work before our first baby was born. I wanted to be a super dad. I've always idolized the idea of a super dad, and she wanted to be a super mom. Now, luckily, we both grew up in Canada, so nobody had told us that this is actually impossible. <laughs> so we did it. <laughs> We took the 10-year path to early retirement. I graduated, got a job, worked really hard, rode bikes, rode my bike to work, drank beers, fixed up my house, learned about the stock market and investing, and was able to retire just before my 31st birthday, and not too long after, our baby boy was born. So the goal was reached. I was a super dad. We were both super parents. We played together as a family on the weekends, but also on the weekdays. We went on all these big trips together. But meanwhile, so all this was going on, and instead of the 10-year path to retirement, our friends and former co-workers were on a completely different path. They were on the 10-year path to still Brokesville. And that goes something like this. You graduate with huge student loans, and then you get your first job, then you buy your first car, but it's a brand new one, so you buy it on credit, and then you go out to Friday night, happy hour every Friday, and you go out to lunch every day, and you spend hundreds of dollars every time, Eventually, you might meet somebody special, so it's time to get married, and you spend $25,000 on a wedding. Then you buy your first house with almost no money down, because who could ever save up $25,000 for a down payment? <laughs> then later, you have to upgrade your house, and then later you upgrade your car to a bigger one with a bigger car loan. And along the way, you're probably getting yourself some nice treats like $2,500 road bikes and $3,000 mountain bikes. And before you know it, you're 30 years old, and then 35 years old, I'm 45 years old, and you still have no money. And this might sound pretty familiar, because it's what everybody does. Back to part number one, then. What exactly do I mean when I say that you suck at money? 
Well, it's simple. Any money that you spend that does not make you happier is wasted. And research shows this ends up being most of our money. The reason is that most of us predict the wrong stuff about our purchases. To understand this, it helps to, a lot of it comes from a big misunderstanding about luxury itself. Most of us assume, assume that luxury products and showing off our wealth is preferable to good old fashioned hard work in solving our own problems. We all say stuff like, well, of course, a life of luxury is better. If that weren't true, why did they invent luxury in the first place? Even I used to think this. Like back when I was 21 years old, my goals and hopes and desires were completely different from the stuff I value here at age 41. I was much more materialistic back then. Adding more fancy shit and taking away effort from your life is not the path to a better life. And the reason is that effort and learning and all this other stuff that we've figured out by studying it in recent decades is really the stuff that makes us happier. Now, if you check out this next slide, I've put these things into hexagons so they look scientific. These are the... <laughs> that psychologists have figured out actually have an effect on human happiness. You've got friendship, freedom, health, meaningful work, there's that word again, privacy, a philosophy of life, which is what helps you decide how to react when things go wrong, and that's something that's missing in a lot of our lives, and of course, community, access to a network of friendly people. Because even a life at the bottom of the US spending scale is still way more than enough to be happy, as long as you spend it on the right stuff. And if my life at $25,000 is enough to be happy, what about all these people who spend $50,000 or $100,000 or $200,000 and up and still claim they can't make enough to reduce their stress levels or they'll never have enough to retire? What are they missing? What this means is that we are living in a trap. It's so serious, there should be a warning label on every luxury product, like warning the Dalai Lama has determined this product does not bring extra happiness. <laughs> Can I really become rich enough to retire in 10 years instead of 45 years? And if so, how the feather could I possibly do this? <laughs> and the secret does not require a huge income. And it's not to become a fancy, genius stock market investor. And it doesn't require you to buy my amazing books or courses or DVD, DVD sets because I don't have anything for sale. The secret is just to spend much less than you earn. And it's probably like, oh, is that the answer? Because everyone says, well, I can't do that. That would make me sad. I love my pickup truck. But that's wrong. We already know, we already established that happiness is the only logical pursuit. <laughs> and we also established that buying extra luxury stuff does not bring us more happiness. And this is where something comes in that I like to call the shockingly simple math of early retirement. And what this tells us is that your mandatory working career depends on only one factor. To understand it, you might consider the following story. On the one side, you have this hard-working carpenter guy who happens to look a lot like my friend Mike. Now, Mike <laughs> works hard and part-time and maybe brings in about $40,000 a year. And he has a happy life that costs him about $36,000 a year, which leaves him saving $4,000. On the other side, we have a wealthy doctor guy named George. George brings in $400,000 a year, but because he has a doctor lifestyle, it's very expensive. He has a giant house, a fleet of Lexus SUVs, golf club memberships, and so on. But he doesn't manage to spend all of it, and still there's $40,000 left over at the end of each year, 10 times as much as Mike is saving. Given this information, which one of these two guys do you think would be wealthy enough to retire, assuming they want to continue living their same lifestyle after retirement? The surprising answer is, they would have the same retirement date, exactly the same. How could this be? Well, to understand that, it helps to take a look at this next graph, which is my favorite retirement calculator, or a prison sentence calculator, <laughs> straight off my website. And as you can see, it's a long list of bars that start out huge on the left and slide nicely down as you move to the right. Now, this is a graph of how long you have to work. It turns out the only thing that controls how long you have to work is how much of your paycheck you can save after tax as a percentage of your take-home pay. Now, if you look carefully, one of these bars says United States on it, and it's at around 6%. That means the average American saves 6% of their income, 
spends the other 94 percent and thus is on track to retire in about 60 years, which is the same as never. <laughs> the only thing that saves us is our social security program, our inheritances, or little corner cases. Our savings rate is not big enough, and therein lies the problem. But if you just start making small changes, like just switching from the ridiculous cars and trucks that most of us buy with an average price of $30,000 to something reasonable, like buying a used Honda off of Craigslist, for example, with money that maybe you actually have, can already bring you up to a savings rate of 20 percent, which cuts 20 years off of your prison sentence. Learning to make a good meal at home and not going out to dinner five to seven nights a week, like many people do in my kind of age range, makes another big notch. Learning to ride a bike and designing your life so you're not commuting back and forth 15,000 miles like the average American actually does, according to the statistics, brings you up another giant notch. And just making a few other changes, like not air conditioning the crap out of your house 24 hours a day and doing 50 loads of laundry for one person will bring you the rest of the way there. And if you can get to a savings rate around 64 percent, just as an example, that puts you to a career that's under 11 years. And that's exactly what I did during my career in software, using only my superpowers as naive Canadian man. <laughs> I mean, here I was, thinking I was living this big, fancy life in my new American job, but because I only managed to spend part of my paycheck on fancy stuff, the rest of it built up, and that left me free to retire before my first baby was born. Now, if I can do that, this actually works at almost every income level, by the way, and lower incomes, it's even more important to become efficient at saving. But it's almost effortlessly easy for those of us with higher incomes. And yet, somehow, the higher income people are still almost as broke and stuck working almost as long as those of us with average incomes. So if you got all that down pat, you're finally ready for part three. We're on the home stretch. Work is better when you don't need the money. Now, it's wonderful to become rich enough to retire, as I said. And a lot of people, when presented with my unavoidable logic that early retirement is not as difficult as they thought, they pull out one final excuse. They're like, but I like my job. I'm a doctor, an entrepreneur, or some other cool thing. I, I could never retire. I don't know what I'd do if I retired. So I can keep spending all my money on crap, right? <laughs> and of course, the answer is no. You ignore Mr. Money Mustache's advice at your own peril. <laughs> because no matter what your job, it gets way better if you don't need the money. We're really talking about two different things when we talk about work and money. The purpose of work is to create. It is to fuel your soul. Whereas the purpose of earning money is to have enough money. How much is enough? Well, enough to max out your happiness. After that, getting any more money will not make any difference in your happiness. Now, the good news is this is not the death bell of your career. It's more like the birth announcement, because if you're still working when you don't need the money, you have no choice but to do that work truthfully. If you can get yourself financially independent, not only does it give you the power to eliminate most of the bullshit from your life, but it forces your life's work to become more truthful. Now, this shit really matters, because in the world today, there are people who grind away like little gears until they die, and then there are people who do pretty well for themselves, but leave nothing more than a trail of conspicuous consumption, like empty champagne bottles, depreciated luxury cars and yachts and vacation homes. And then there are people who leave a lasting difference. Now, there's a classic Greek proverb which goes something like, a society grows great only when the old people plant trees, even when they know they won't be around to enjoy the shade of those trees. And that's why the title of this talk ends with, and save the world. Because if you can get yourself free from the need for money, you have no choice but to do work that is better for you and better for the world. I mean, sure, people will like you more and you'll be richer and happier, but if you're doing it for love instead of money, you'll have no choice but to do a better job. Thanks, guys.